Everybody ready for the unsession? Yay! Did everyone have cake? Yay! Well, I just looked at more than half of it's gone. Thank you, everybody, for doing your part. Um, Thank you, thank you, thank you everyone who's here in person and who uh, hopefully you had an excellent lunch. And for those of you who are here virtually, thank you for joining us for, um, for the afternoon part of the um, SUNY Online Summit. We are um, starting off the afternoon with our annual unsession. This will be the 15th year that I do an unsession at the summit. Um, and if you were here this morning, you heard me talk a little bit about uh, this is the 25th anniversary of the SUNY Online Summit and the 30th anniversary of online education at SUNY. And I wanted to, um, for my portion of the unsession, well, the way the unsession works is everyone gets a chance to talk for three minutes about something cool that you're doing at your institution. Um, and there's a Google Doc. And so you just go to the Google Doc. Uh, the link is on the website, but it's also uh, a bit.ly that you can see there. So bit.ly slash unsession2024. It's case sensitive. So you have to have it, you know, but you can also click on the link from the website. You don't have to type that in. Um, so you go to the, that website and find a spot on the um, list to, um, you know, in order and, and just write your name, your institution and something cool that you want to share. And then when it's your turn to come up, you come up and talk about the cool thing and you document what you talk about on the on the Google Doc. So we have an artifact that we can share beyond the end of this um, uh, this event. And it's also to support and facilitate networking between each other on cool things that we're doing. Um, so I always kick us off and um, I always tell people to be uh, forewarned, right, Simone, that if nobody signs up or if, there, if we run out of people and we still have time, I will call on you to come up and talk about something cool because every person in this room physically and online is doing something cool that they can share with our uh, broader community. So welcome back, everyone, and let's uh, buckle up and get ready for this uh, fantastic unsession. So for my um, uh, on session. If you look at the Google Doc, you'll see I wanted to talk a little bit about our anniversaries. I wanted to talk a little bit about the digital project that uh, John Zelnick, raise your hand, John, is facilitating. He's capturing videos from uh, our DLE campuses so that we can see how you design your nav bar, how, what your course homepage looks like, what a course template or structure might look like in your environment. So if you want to give a three minute video, um, uh, either virtual Virtually or in person, you can talk to John Zelnick. I wanted to mention the uh, DEI project that I'm working on, and the links are in the Google Doc, so I'm not going to go over that too much. There's a, a demo of our DEI project. Um, and then I wanted to also mention our DLE templates, our, the freely available and openly licensed Oscar-informed course templates that are available in a variety of instructional modalities. So the links for that are all there in the Google Doc. You can see it. Somebody highlighted it right now. Um, but the thing that I wanted to chat with you about, and I'm going to do it super quick. So if those of you who know me know that I don't throw anything away. I keep everything. I have everything. So if you've ever interacted with me in, in email or in any way, I still have that email. And I will bust it out periodically at sessions like this where we're celebrating stuff. So I found the notes from the mid-summit, June 8th, 1999. So first I wanna say that the first summit, I said this this morning, first summit was like a couple of people and me in my office, and that was in 1998. Um, and we started online learning in 1994 with a Sloan grant. We delivered our first online courses in 1995, fully online asynchronous courses, four institutions, 56 students in 1995. Uh, so then the summit, the, 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 this was probably the second summit in 1999, uh, there were a number of people there and I asked people to share an accomplishment, a crisis, something that works well and something that needs improvement. So my report for that uh, summit was spring 1999, we had 300 courses and 6,000 online enrollments. In fall 1999, we had 400 courses and 10,000 on online enrollments. There were 40 campuses involved from SUNY 
and we integrated iTech into the system management. We expanded to the SUNY Training Center, now the CPD, to provide services. And we expanded the SUNY Help Desk, Mike, to include student support. This was 1999. And I, uh, my accomplishment was surviving the spring 1999 term and revising the faculty handbook, transitioning to a new email system, copying databases, which I did myself, database creation. And I also created the Faculty Center Student Survey and Faculty Survey. The crisis was I accidentally, where's Harry? I accidentally deleted the DB admin database. I don't know if you know what that is. I barely remember what that is, but that was not good. Um, and um, there was some sort of student satisfaction debacle. That's, that's I'm reading right here. And what um, worked well was template creation. And what needed improvement was stuff needs to be automated so we can scale. <laughs> Um, so let me see who else I can talk about here. Lori uh, from our help desk reported that um, she's gotten more experience working with faculty. The crisis was um, over full databases, what worked well. Um, she didn't say anything worked well, but what needed improvement was international internet connections, apparently. Lynn Mayer, our help desk person, talked about surviving the semester with problems with student email, and she references AOL and the wrong browser. Um, the crisis was instability of our servers. What works well is Harry. Is Harry in the room? Uh, that's what worked well. And I got to tell you, in a couple of these, it was Harry that worked well. Um, Let's see, Randy Resbeck from Monroe Community College was one of our instructional designers. He supported 20 new courses in one semester uh, and Monroe had 65 courses and 780 enrollments in the spring. And um, let's see, crisis was weird database corruption and worked well was template creation, <laughs> apparently. Um, Bill Jones was one of our uh, first instructional designers. Uh, his accomplishment was a reluctant faculty member sent a congratulatory uh, email to Eric Fredrickson, who was our uh, director at the time. And the crisis was hiding test quiz documents because when they're hidden, they can be cracked. Apparently students were cracking that hidden thing. <laughs> Um, and Bill Pels, who was one of our um, original faculty uh, developers, he was the founder, this is what he listed as an accomplishment, the founder and first commandant of the Internet Academy at Herkimer County Community College. Herkimer had six degree programs, um, 10 degree programs for the fall of 99 and 26 courses for the fall of 99. Uh, what worked well was informing students of what they need to get into a course and they sent out a pamphlet to students. And what um, would make job easier would be loading new databases um, and, and automating some of that. So anyway, oh wait, let me do the one, uh, Bob Yavitz, who was one of our instructional designers from uh, TC3, who's actually no longer with us, he uh, reported being a small but growing um, uh, entity in SLN at the time the th with the third highest enrollment. And the crisis was AWOL faculty in the fall semester, and what worked well was Harry. <laughs> um, um, there was one in here that said that it was Peter um, that worked well. I can't remember who it was. Um, but anyway, th so these are my notes from uh, the first uh, SUNY online summit. Um, so now all my notes and links to see more information about some of the stuff I talked to are in that Google Doc. And I am going to turn it over to my fr friend, Bill, who is online. And Bill, are you able to unmute yourself to talk about your uh, custom GPT quiz question maker? Uh, yeah. Where are you from and what's your institution and where are you? So I am in Chicago, and I am with uh, Wiley slash Academic Partnerships. Academic Partnerships just completed the acquisition of Wiley, and I'm an instructional designer, and that's my day job. And then I also teach adjunct uh, graduate level instructional design. So this has uh, been a whole brand new world with AI, I, uh, which is part of the reason I created this custom GPT uh, and uh, wanted to demo. So this is a live demo. Anything can happen, right? So. I do need a little participation from the audience here. If anyone would like to just give me a topic, it could be a subject of any kind, and uh, we'll see if it creates some quiz questions for us. So uh, can, can anyone either type into the chat, which uh, I don't know if I can see. Zombies making cheese on Mars? Right. <laughs> from, 
from yesterday, right? <laughs> well, well, let's let's push it with uh, with something that we can then have our subject matter experts, which there are so very many on this call, uh, could verify. Uh, so perhaps a discipline of uh, or or sub topic or subtopic of any kind. Astronomy, specifically the eclipse. Astronomy, and I'll put eclipse if I can spell it. <laughs> eclipse. And if you can see my screen, you should be able to see that it's producing some questions for us. Uh, at the moment, it's italicizing the answers that are supposed to be the correct answers. And this is part of what GPT can do already, right? Uh, I think what a lot of us who have been using LMSs for a while uh, really want is, is just give us the questions, right? Uh, so that's part of what it can do. Another thing that this can do, and I'll wait till it finishes, it's only set to give 10. And then of course, any of you that are an expert in this particular discipline can tell whether or not those answers are right, which I rely heavily on subject matter experts as an instructional designer is another thing that it can do. And I'm gonna attach a file here, uh, which is actually an article uh, that I had downloaded. It's, it's an open access article and it's actually right here. While it's working, I'll go to my second tab here. It's actually this article. So this is a, a regular journal article in psychology. And what it does is if you ever wanted to quiz students on that article, you know, hey, read the article and then develop a quiz for them. This is something that GPT-4, now this is GPT-4, this is also the paid version. This is something that it can do as well. Uh, so very interesting. Uh, again, if you're an expert in the, these particular disciplines, you'll be able to tell whether or not these italicized answers are correct. Uh, but it's definitely something that I've used uh, quite a bit already for low stakes assessments within courses to get students just familiar with particular topics, but it can go deep. You just need, of course, a subject matter expert to verify uh, that those answers are correct. And I will leave you with one more thing and I'll just pop all of this information right in the chat, uh, which is for those of you who think, well, Bill, hey, this isn't that impressive because Blackboard Ultra already does this. Uh, and it, it has just started uh, to uh, do quiz, auto generate quiz questions within the LMS if any of you use Blackboard Ultra. Uh, so I found that to be particularly interesting. So, but I put the links in there to the quiz question maker that I created which you can play around with any time for free. Uh, Blackboard Ultra's video that kind of shows you what they've been doing. So Anthology is definitely leading that charge. And then- uh, Okay, Bill, your three minutes is up. That's we all actually, I have for <laughs> Thank we you for have, sharing. We, we, do, we do have a question for Bill. Oh, sure. All right, real fast. Can you control the level of Bloom's taxonomy? Uh, you know what? I haven't tested that or built it in, but I'm Here's sure- John. We so feel free to contact me and we can play with it. <laughs> All right, um, Abigail, thank you. Say hi to everybody. Abigail's helping to moderate our, uh, from MCC, she's helping to moderate our, our virtual session. And up next is John Locke. Oh, this is a place for us to work. Um, at Plattsburgh, my, I'll never get used to PC buttons here. At Plattsburgh, um, my uh, colleague and I, Peter, I, some of you old timers will know Peter Friesen. Uh, one of the best analytical minds I've ever worked with. He and I maintain what we call the Brightspace Site Developers Area. We have uh, four modules in here, and the Welcome to Brightspace will soon get its name changed because we're all in there now, and nobody needs to be welcomed there anymore. But we've, we've, along with our IT department, built ways for people to actually create a development page on the fly and, uh, and, you know, they, they can request. We don't automatically create course pages for them. They can request them. And uh, all of that is explained in the welcome section. We also have a section on accessibility. And uh, I, oh, these buttons up here are the way to go, aren't they? Here we go. And, uh, you know, I, I try to load important stuff that'll be helpful for people here. Um, we also, let's see, about three or four times a year, we do a, a workshop uh, on using Brightspace. And uh, recently we acquired uh, Yuja as our video streaming platform, which is just, 
I'm really happy with it because you can go in and index the videos. So I took of all, all of Peter's and my uh, workshop videos and loaded them in here, edited them, uh, you know, edited out, out, out all the, the questions that didn't need to be in there because we were going to answer them in two minutes anyway, things like that. And uh, we indexed them. Yeah, well, actually, one of my in interns indexed them. So this is like quick reference for people who have questions. We also, Peter's great at answering people's questions uh, in email. And uh, so once he does, I kind of take his, his responses and I turn them into PDFs. You'll notice there's one that's yellow on the uh, ally scale, but the rest of them are green. And, um, you know, they, they're just kind of like FAQ step-by-step -step directions. You know, and this is just what we need, but I, I mean, we meaning Plattsburgh and our faculty, but an organization like this, if we were to create some sort of a site developers area in Brightspace, think of the potential, think of, think of what we could do with that. I don't know if we're ever at the point where we're getting ready to plan something like that, but if we are, count me in, I'll be happy to be on whatever committee needs to make it happen. That's all I got. That's it. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, John. Okay, next up is Stan. Stan, I think I saw you online, yeah? I am here. Hi. Hi, can I share? I think so. Yep. Very good. All right, let's share. <clears throat> so this is basically a shameless plug. Uh, I'm looking for book reviewers. So uh, my latest book, Strategies for Success, basically looks at the last 25 years I've been working in higher ed as an instructional technologist and the lessons I learned that you don't learn in the classroom. And um, so that's available. Uh, Ebook is provided if you're so inclined. Also, a shout out for the Association for Talent Development, a wonderful organization I've been part of for 15, 20 years. Uh, they have a wonderful capability model, which deals with a lot of stuff that we're doing. And my personal library at work is probably got most of their books uh, on instructional design, learning sciences, delivering training and such. So huge shout out to them. And finally, uh, New England, uh, also in association for uh, ATD, is we're having our area conference October 17th and 18th. Uh, folks that are involved in talent development, um, how to help deliver better instruction are, are gathering. So you're invited. I give back my time. <laughs> Thanks, Stan. Um, can you put links to that event in your in the in the Google uh, sheet and anything else that can you know so people can come back and look at it? Um, and next uh, up is Robin. It's all in that slide deck. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you, Robin. Are you there? I am here. Hi, everybody. Um, I just want to um, talk to you all about um, the. Exploring Emerging Technologies for Lifelong Learning and Success Project. This is a SUNY-wide concept project. Many of you here have heard me ramble about it for years and years. And many are very new, so I've seen a lot of new names you may not know about. So I'll try to give you an overview and a call for action in three minutes. Um, so my name is Robin Sullivan. I'm a teaching and learning strategist in the UV Library. Um, I'm the director of the project, and also Nicole Simon from Nassau Community College has been extremely instrumental in the project and may hopefully take over when I step away. I'd also like to make a call out. Uh, thank you very much to Edback and uh, SUNY Create to help us move MTech into the new SUNY Create platform, and we've done some wonderful work getting our programming back up to speed. So I still have two whole minutes. I'm going to take one of those. Does that it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Is that is that it, Robin? Oh, she's doing for video. Okay. So we're just going to show that.
We're not getting audio from the video. Yeah, that's um, okay. So that was just a very quick um, overview. It, my audio didn't come through. That's okay. It, that video is on the homepage of the MTech site. Um, you put the link to the video in the chat, right, Robin? So um, yeah. it's in the unsession or in the unsession doc. I will put it in the chat when we can. Um, but I do want to just say that you can go into the course um, or you can use the wiki separately. If you do decide to enroll in the online course, it's freely available for everybody in the world. Uh, folks from SUNY can earn a digital uh, badge and a Coursera certificate at no cost. Um, along with all the other courses and specializations that are in Coursera. Um, and you can also create, you're encouraged to create a portfolio where you reflect on how you learn about all the freely available emerging technology tools that are in the MTech wiki. Um, the wiki itself is able to be um, populated. So there's so much coming out with AI, many, many tools every day. Please put the really good ones into MTech. There is a category that you can search by so that you can narrow down to either the video aspect or AI or e-portfolios, accessibility, um, et cetera. Here is our new URL that works on SUNY Create. It's now mtech.suny.edu. And okay, Robin, that's your time. You. Thank you. All the partners, please contact me. Thank you very much. Thanks, Robin. All right, next up, Jamie. Everybody, um, can I just share this? Are you sharing this, Alex, your, your I'm online sorry. session? I'm sorry. How about um, that work? At now? any rate, I've put... Can we share this? Ah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jamie Heron. I'm the SUNY Online Program Manager up at System Administration. I love it there. Um, I just wanted to come here to share a couple of things for online faculty development. And uh, especially after the student panel, some of these things might be really timely to share with faculty on your campuses. Um, we have, we're going to start offering what are called professional education services webinars. And if you know me at all, you know I like acronyms, so it's PEZ, and I get to be a PEZ dispenser. So uh, I'm super excited about this, and we're going to have like monthly webinars starting in 24, 25 academic year, but I figured we'd get two to get us started here in the spring, and the first one is on March 13th at 2 p.m., and that's going to be with uh, Jackie Skybe, who is a professor and instructional technologist at Cuyahoga Community College in Ohio, which is near where I grew up. Uh, but anyway, um, she's going to be doing an introduction to AI with a focus on the ethics of the uh, implementation of AI, uh, not just uh, whether or not it's good, but also some of the uh, implicit biases that are associated with AI. And then I just wanted to do a plug for our new certificate program. It's the Instructional Design Certificate Program, where people will learn such things that uh, our students were talking about on that panel about what's effective practice, et cetera, the design models, et cetera. So go ahead and, and send that out to your faculty here. That starts in the fall. It's going to be a three course series. They're six weeks each, and they'll be done in um, less than six months if you take it consecutively. We have also, thanks to Susan and Michelle, who are back there in the corner, uh, offering a newly revised online student support student. Uh, Sorry, online student support certificate program. I'm not used to talking live. I'm used to being at my desk with a cat in my lap. So this is really weird. Um, we've already, we're on course number two and I couldn't be prouder of the, the course materials that they're offering. It's, it's really great. Um, there's a link here for all of our CPD certificate programs and courses. And we keep expanding that list in response to what people are asking for in the community. So if you have any requests for upcoming courses or certificate programs that you feel might serve your community of practice, you should always bring that to any of the, the program managers at the CPD's attention. And finally, Otter this year, um, the link there is for Otter 2023, but it will be the link to Otter 2024. That is online teaching technology and educational resources. And uh, that's gonna again be in two parts, one a spring design, series and then a fall delivery series. So thanks for your time. I did, oh, I made it before the little. Hey, Jamie. Jamie, one, one, one quick one. Is, is the ID certification open to non-SUNY? 
It is, yeah. Is that still a partnership with OLC? It is not. It is not. It's brand new and it's, it's ours. brand new. Well, it's designed entirely by um, Dan Barrancata. He's going to be, uh, he's, de he's designed it and then he'll be delivering it in the fall. Thank you. Yep. Okay, next up is Kristen Hall from Stony Brook. Hi, everyone. Um, so we just wanted to showcase um, some new resources that we are doing for faculty at Stony Brook. Um, we are looking to have more self-paced resources that they can do on their own that are about 15 to 20 minutes um, in length. length. Um, so we have them on our website here, and we have three um, highlighted right now. So I'm going to just go to the digital accessibility one. And these are all done in articulate um, story, uh, articulate rise. Sorry, we don't use storyline. We used rise for this. Um, and so they have um, knowledge checks built into it at the end of each of these modules. Um, so if you just click here and start the course, they're very short. Um, and interactive. So this one really focuses on best practices for digital accessibility. Um, so, you know, heading structures, how to use your fonts, um, tables, um, hyperlinks, how to format your hyperlinks and so forth. And then if you scroll to the bottom, you can see that we do have short knowledge checks here. Um, these knowledge checks are designed so that um, no matter what you choose as your answer, you will then get feedback on what the right answer is if you didn't choose the right answer. So it's not something that someone would have to take over and over again. Um, it's meant just to kind of take once. Um, and then we do have a survey at the end where um, we can we are hoping to gather feedback. Um, but anyone can take these. These are not just um, for Stony Brook faculty. Um, so hopefully you can share these as well. We do plan to have more. We have an assessment one coming, um, one on student engagement. Um, and then um, teaching large online classes, I'm sorry, teaching large classes, they're not specifically online. So we do plan to expand this even more um, to really highlight specific topics for faculty development. Great, thanks, uh, Kristen, thank you. Um, links to all of that are on our Google Doc. I have Travis Matson on, is that you up there virtually, Travis? No. Where's, oh, <laughs> there you are. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's like... That was funny. <laughs> Hi, Travis. Hi there. <laughs> so I just want to bring something. I'm just going to let this play while I talk. Okay. I have a story. Let's see. There we go. That's a good one. So a few years ago, I was... Uh, talking with a student, I identified uh, some run-of-the-mill plagiarism, which I know we're all nostalgic for in the age of AI. Um, and she said, I have no idea how that got on my paper. There's a big block of text, personal narrative, and in the middle, there's a biography of Arundhati Roy, the Indian author. I knew that was plagiarism, so I, I went in, I asked her to show me where she wrote, and she was writing in Google Docs, which I say you don't do. Uh, but she was, thankfully, she was writing in Google Docs, and we looked at the version history, and I noted there were two authors, and uh, they both had the same last name. She said, oh, that's my sister. She was helping me. So her sister had plagiarized and pasted in a paragraph. Um, and you know, she didn't know that her sister was doing that necessarily. Uh, it, it was a, a challenge. Around the same time, I came across this uh, time-lapse poetry journal, which uh, uses a proprietary word processor that captures keystrokes and converts them to a video. So you can actually watch poems being written in real time. Uh, and so I wanted to kind of put these two experiences together. And so I've been having students write in uh, Word 365 through OneDrive. So they, they create, I, sometimes I create document templates for them. They put them on OneDrive, they auto save. And so everything the students do is captured by Microsoft 365. We can look back at version history. And my thinking on this is also informed by the, the text that I've linked to in the on-session document, Rewriting by Joseph Harris. It's a classic of composition literature. But uh, basically the theory is you, know, you can check up on students, how they're progressing through a document. They, uh, Microsoft 365 auto saves. And it, it sort of functions like this. It's not granular enough to show keystrokes, but you can see if large blocks of text have been posted. And this is just sort of my way of de-escalating some of the conversation around academic integrity with AI that, you know, I spend a lot less time policing documents. I'm not 
I don't have a criminal justice degree. I'm not qualified to do that. My focus is just on learning. And this is um, using Microsoft 365 and, and sharing this with my students is just one way that I do that in my classes. Thank you, Travis. Sure. All right, Erin uh, Maney's up next. All right, hello. Um, let's see, move the doc up. Move it up a little bit. There we go. Um, so just three quick links to share with you. The first, if you're not aware of it, is our community engagement calendar. This is on the online.suny.edu site. At the top, there's a link for resources, and it's in that drop-down menu. Um, so we try to keep our monthly webinar series up there, um, and the next thing on the list is also there. Next week is Open Education Week. It always is on the heels of the summit. So it's very exciting. Uh, we are going to be hosting next week six webinars from six different SUNY campuses, um, Monday through Thursday, actually. And our webinars are also promoted on the um, OE Global website. So it is an international website, which is great because our SUNY campuses get that extended exposure, which we're really proud of. So I would encourage you to take a look at the session descriptions and registration is free, but that'll get you the Zoom link. So hop on there and um, sign up for those. And then if you were here yesterday, you heard me mention Topper, um, but I wanted to make sure that someone had access to this if you really were interested. You did not have to submit an effective practice to the SUNY program to be able to do it uh, to the Topper uh, program. So Topper has put out their call for submissions. This is an international online teaching practices repository, and it is through a partnership we have with the University of Central Florida. Um, they have uh, three categories for contributions, and they are course content, interaction, and assessment. There's a link there that you can contribute if you're interested. If you have an online teaching practice in those areas, or if you know of faculty who do, please share this with them. Um, we have 16 SUNY contributions on Topper to date, and you can view all of the SUNY ones there, or just by going to the site and putting in the search box SUNY. They'll all come up that way too. Thankful for hashtags. I think that's it. Okay. Thanks, Erin. Bless you. All right, next up is Deb Spiro and Clan. <laughs> Laura Sullivan and Neil Francisco. I see you put it in the doc. Thank you. To set up. So okay. can I have Stan's extra minute? <laughs> We're up. taking Stan's minute. Okay. To set up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. So um, Deborah Spiro again with my colleagues from Nassau Community College. And what we want to show you is how we are using our campus landing page in Brightspace to promote our faculty and student support services. We complement that with emails and flyers, but um, faculty can just go into the landing page and click on the appropriate links and uh, get into the sessions. So. Um, while we're waiting for that, I'll also say that, um, well, I could talk about it again, but we, um, we took the, um, SUNY had created a student um, asynchronous course. So we customized it for our students so that they can familiarize themselves with our nav bar and our information and created our own okay. yep. stuff. So we just wanted to say out. shout out to you guys for your help and assistance. Okay. Good. Good. We good? good. Driving? Thanks. So. Yeah, okay. Drive. Yeah. okay. So if you yeah. scroll down, this is our NASA landing page. Uh, quick after the My Courses we and Announcements, we have all our instructional technologies that we employ to keep faculty up to date on that. And then here we go with the faculty training options and a shout out to Sal back um, on campus who helped with the design. So we have weekly faculty drop-ins that faculty just click on the sessions and there are the Zoom links. We have one on one support faculty can click on and they go to our instructional designer um, calendar make yeah. up oh, sorry yeah, yeah what's your, what's your, uh, calendly yeah. and lastly with the um, faculty support we have monthly workshops not monthly we send out a monthly flyer on all our workshops so again faculty click here on sessions and they can see the calendar of workshops for the month it links to 
a website we created. All right, and then, um, student support. Yeah, and the student support. So we kind of emulated the same thing for students so that they have the opportunity for drop-ins as well as an intro to Brightspace workshop that we have asynchronously and synchronously. And then we um, also have created some advanced workshops going into more of like discussions, assignments, and creating audio video for their courses. And we don't have anything listed for this semester but, yet. Okay. <laughs> Okay. And then our last piece, and introduce myself, I'm Neil Francisco, one of the sys admins at Nassau. And a nice thing that we did, and using the Discover feature on Brightspace, we listed, and shout out again to one, another sys administrator we have on campus, his name is Sal. Um, he created the design for this, but the logic here is that students and faculty members, they can find these organizations that we have on campus. And also we have um, courses that are called companion courses. There are substitute materials to the specific course that the student is taking and students can enroll themselves into those companion courses and also into the organization. And faculty can do the same as well. Great, thank you. Neil, a question for Neil. What, excuse me, what kind of attendance do you have with student Brightspace sessions? Uh, so, in the very beginning, when we first switched over to Brightspace, we were having 300 to 400 students coming. And now we have whittled our way down to about 15 to 20 per session. Um, but we're looking at ways so that we can continue to promote these workshops. They've actually moved over to doing this synchronous more. So we have way more synchronous students because it generates a certificate right away for them we, that we created. Um, I mean, asynchronous, asynchronous, sorry, thank you. I'm like, what? The <laughs> yeah. asynchronous more because they can just get their certificate and go on and then because the teachers are asking for it and as they're becoming more comfortable. But the drop-in sessions, like for the first couple of days of the semester, we get people, but then we start doing it more and more frequently, but we're still trying to get students. So, and that's why I've been joining with up with Susan to find out how we can get the students in. <laughs> All right, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, up next is Chrissy Mitchell from Dutchess Community College. Hello. So, um, part of my job is uh, part, the fun part of my job is to uh, look at cool new stuff um, and to either delight or horrify my faculty, <laughs> um, and that has been uh, AI mostly. Um, and I also get bored very fast. So I have gotten bored with horrifying my faculty with words with AI. I have gotten bored with horrifying my faculty or delighting them with pictures. So now I have discovered a new thing um, that I can horrify or delight my faculty with music. Um, so now I don't know how well this is going to work. And I didn't really play with this one too much. I generated it in about 30 seconds. Um, you can actually work with this a little bit more um, to make it longer and everything like that. But I don't know how well this is going to work, but I'm going to try to play it for you. Um, the AI tool is called suno.ai. I'll just show you that first, suno.ai. And it uh, makes music. Um, and let me show you the one that I made for the 30th anniversary of SUNY Online. <laughs> so the prompt that I gave um, was um, upbeat city pop about the 30th anniversary of SUNY Online. So let's let's see what happens here. And it, what it did was it will generate a cover of the of the thing. It'll generate the lyrics. Um, like I said, I didn't edit these. You can actually edit the lyrics. You can give it your own lyrics as well. So I just did whatever. So let's see if we can actually hear this. is also posted on um it's posted on twitter and it's posted in the list um you guys play with your own songs it's really really cool and i have not found anything very um like unethical about it yet but we'll see <laughs> oh chrissy 
Enjoy. That was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Chrissy. Okay, I don't know how Lisa's gonna, you know, follow that, but <laughs> where are you, Lisa? Are you in I'm here? Right. You I, cannot, I cannot possibly, possibly uh, improve on that. Mine's a very simple <laughs> idea. Just a reminder, before going into the live lecture, I pop on Panopto and actually do uh, a run through, especially getting started um, with the lecture. I record it and usually I end up with something I can share uh, across multiple. But again, the, the message is that Panopto's just right there in bright space and one more use for it is just to uh, practice a lecture and that gives you a mini recording you can you can share but you do have to go in and change uh, the permission setting and I also e either embed it or use a link so but I love the song too I'm I'm definitely going to go search on that tool <laughs> thanks so much Lisa uh, up next is our own Ed Beck Hey everybody, I just have a small project I wanted to share. Um, on my campus, and I expect many of yours, experiential learning is becoming a large topic and we're looking to have on-campus internships and on-campus uh, experiential learning opportunities. And I just wanted to share how I am putting my students to work. Um, I have here and I posted into the document, um, I have an art student working for me that I have folded into a lot of the web making things that I do anyway. And um, I, we're making a OER textbook um, at Oneana in the subject of education. And we decided because it was OER and we often OER has found images in it that we were actually gonna have her work as an illustrator and create custom illustrations for it of all of the educational thinkers and things that we were doing. And also she has to interview each of the chapter authors and to make sure that she comes up with like associated quotes or things that represent those different um, when she creates those portraits. So I thought that was just a cool little project that she's working on. She's so far, she's created three of those um, custom illustrations. Um, there's Paul Ferrari and bell hooks um and then if you scroll down the page she's got one more um which is our knowledge centered folks got mortimer adler and ed hirsch jr and so this is how we're using a student um in our department trying to create an experiential learning situation for them and i wanted to just show one other project that she's working on she's working on creating a website for the experiential Okay, I'm not gonna be able to show that one. She's creating a website for the experiential um, learning website, which is heavily based on the work that Buffalo often shares at sessions like this, where they have their project portal, port, uh, project portal, um, and they so kindly openly licensed that to give us permission to steal it all. So we are happily stealing it all to highlight our experiential learning on campus. Thank you, Ed. And up, up next is uh, Hope and Ed and Adele. Hi. Hello. All right. So I'm Hope. I'm Ed. Adele Merlino from SUNY Maritime. There you go. <laughs> and um, so as you can read, inspired by Oscar, our very own Oscar, um, we're creating a set of indicators for COIL courses and COIL projects. You want to read the next slide? Um, right there, right there. It's called the Oscar uh, plus coil rubric, and it'll be integrated into the Oscar website and uh, available to all. Um, and our focus is creating a resource that will help instructors create um, virtual exchange projects and um, give them some context on what's needed to make a successful COIL project. I'm sorry, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of thrown into this. But I anyway, uh, uh, along with this, this is a ITTG grant that we're working on, Maritime's the PI, um, along with Hope and Ed is uh, Dr. 
Nicole Simon from NASA Community, and we're going to present this at CIT. So we'll tell you all about it then. All right. Thanks, Coyle. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, next up is Brandy So, Director of uh, Distance Education. Are you here physically? You are. Hi, Brandy. Hi, everybody. Um, so I just wanted to share an approach that we're using to build some online classes. We're launching a new artificial intelligence uh, management degree completion program online at Farmingdale. And so I just want to kind of like encourage people to consider using student interns and student assistants to build classes because that's what we're doing. So instead of having faculty do the legwork of building their classes in Brightspace. We collaborate in OneDrive with tables that help them outline the module overviews, the course materials. Our graphic designers make amazing PowerPoints and banners, and the students actually put the content in. We're able to control ADA compliance, file compression, formatting, stuff like that. So we're making beautiful classes really fast. So that's it. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brandy. Kim? Kim, you're up. So I wanted to just mention quickly, let me get to the right place in the document, um, uh, as a follow-up to um, something I talked about yesterday, which was the change leadership community of practice um, as kind of a compendium to that, or for some folks, a precursor to joining the community, um, co-teaching a course with my colleague, Jennifer Miller, who's in the Office of Community Colleges in the Education Pipeline at SUNY System. Uh, it's, uh, we're teaching a course called Leading Change in Higher Education. Um, it's offered by the Center for Professional Development, uh, who have been supporting us in that work. And uh, the course um, uh, goes back to this concept of um, if you're leading change initiatives, there's methodology, there's um, a way to be very intentional about that. And so we're sharing two um, frameworks as a part of that course. The first is Adriana Kays, from Adriana Kazar's book in uh, 2018, um, which has key change theories and strategies in higher ed. And there's a macro change framework that's part of that. That really talks about the culture and the context of higher ed, which we often, um, you know, gets in the way of the things that we're trying to do. Uh, and then um, the more straightforward framework is John Cotter's Eight Steps for Leading Change, um, which is very kind of sequential and um, most people kind of um, relate to that because you're looking for it, just tell me what I have to do. Um, so we look at both of those. Um, we're also looking at embedding equity into the frameworks because that's an important piece of what we're trying to do here in higher ed. And so just sharing that, the course is full for this semester, um, but the next one will kick off in August. So if you have nothing better to do, you know, sign up and take our course. Thanks. Thank you, Kim. Okay, next up is Christine Page, who's online. Hey, Christine. Hey, everyone. Um, just a little plug for our uh, ninth annual LIT conference. I'll put the link in the chat. Uh, it's virtual. Consider uh, presenting or attending. We'd love to have everyone. Thanks. Oh, that was fast. Okay, we have five minutes left. We, we ha still have five minutes left. So I'm looking out. That was the last one on the list that I can see. So does anyone online want to unmute and talk about anything cool that they're doing? I'm looking around the room. Maureen, come on up. Well, unmute yourself then and talk. <laughs> okay, so um, just in the area of collaboration, two things we're doing at Orange is uh, we have a program called Bridges for neurodiverse and autistic students attending community colleges. And we found that a lot of them needed extra technical help. So I'm working with them to provide one-on-one uh, -on -one training in using Brightspace, Microsoft Office, upload, download, and it's working out very, very well. So I meet with them twice a month and the students are having a lot of success with that. It really is reducing their anxiety. And the second thing that we did is uh, collaborate with our C-STEP program using the C-STEP students as interns on our IT help desk and in my office, and then provides the students internship opportunities, training, and uh, it's working out really well. So just two, two ways we're actually helping out the students in, in kind of a unique way, I think. Thanks, Maureen. I typed your name on the Google Sheet, so you have to go in there and fill out a little bit more detail, okay? <laughs> um, all right, so who do I not know? Uh, there's a lady with a scarf and blonde hair over there in the corner. Hey, you. 
Hi, I don't know who you are. Will you want to come up here and talk about something cool? Or you can un <laughs> or you can unmute yourself and tell us where you who you are and where you're from so we get can know you and something cool you're doing at your institution. Hello. Okay, it works. So I am Patricia Sobanya. I am with SUNY Rockland Community College and I um I do a lot of virtual exchange. So uh, with, uh, I guess I'll just say the countries that I've worked with, Morocco, China, Dominican Republic, Colombia, South Africa, um, maybe more Mexico, maybe that's about it. And is um, it virtual? I'm, pla I'm planning one with uh, India for 2024, uh, next, the and fall. Is it virtual exchange that you do? Or yeah, virtual exchange. Can you type whatever it is that you just said in my Google Doc so that we capture that? That's awesome. Sure. And do you know Hope? I do. She okay. just came by and said hello. I'm going to go All right. that way. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. All right. Uh, what's the time? Do we have another minute? Because I'm calling on Simone. Simone, what a cool thing are you doing? Come on. Yeah, unmute. Go ahead. Uh, hello, everybody. Simone Reynolds from SUNY Downstate. Um, so I know last year you heard a lot about high flex from what we were doing at SUNY. At, we're all SUNY. At Downstate. So, um, We've sort of stripped that apart a little bit um, based on the lessons that we were learning over um, the past year or so. And so now we've we've we have separate asynchronous courses that are built alongside um, the virtual, sorry, the synchronous and in person that are packaged together. Um, and so my colleague, uh, Wendy Williams, uh, she has a wonderful, uh, wonderful, um, training session. So this year, I think we have packed and P A C T stands for preparing. Go ahead. So I'm trying to create a credential for faculty teaching asynchronously for the first time. And I did a two week, uh, asynchronous workshop for them to give them the experience of being an asynchronous student and it's preparation uh, for asynchronous certificate for teaching. I just made an acronym PACT and I'm happy to share that course with anybody. Thank you. Um, if there's a link to it, could you put it in the Google Doc so that we can um, share if, there, if there's a link for it? That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, thank you to Maureen and Patricia. Chris Price, do you want to say something quick? Are you online? Yeah. Hi. Hey. So really quickly, uh, we just rolled out this semester the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Social Justice Curriculum uh, Development Certificate Program. So it's our first foray into helping faculty with the new SUNY general education requirements. And so um, we're doing it in collaboration with the SUNY Diversity Fellows. Again, first cohort's going on now. Uh, and the next cohort is, is TBD. We don't have a registration date yet, but uh, really cool work happening there. Thank you, Chris. And that wraps our 15th annual unsession. We're right at 2.30. I want to thank everyone for <laughs> absolutely for uh, talking about the cool stuff that you're doing on your campus, thanks to the virtual folks who contributed, the folks here in the room. The Google Doc is still open. It's an artifact of this unsession. I keep them, like I said, forever. So, um, so you can come back to this and fill out anything more that you want to add. If you didn't get a chance to talk and you want to, you can post it on this doc and people will come to the doc and and be able to have access to anything that you share there really appreciate you doing that we're all doing amazing cool stuff at our institutions or in our units and offices and it's nice to share so thank you for doing that